Yes, and, and before I get into the depth of that and why, let's not forget, as you said yesterday, the magnificent performance um, that President Trump did in the debate. He stuck on policy. He let Biden destroy himself just sitting there shaking his hands. I don't know what he said. He doesn't know what he said. He played it perfectly. But look, this is why I've said from day one this was a setup, Chris. They set all the rules, remember. They didn't have to agree to any debate until really early October. They could have just said, we'll debate in October after half the votes were in. But that would have been too late to take him off the ballot, obviously. So they set him up, they being those people who want to remove him and put their own person back in place because they know Joe can't win. So they purposely set this up in June. And they remember, they set the rules. They set it for 9 p.m. Eastern time. That's past his bedtime, literally, on many nights. They made him stand for 90 <laughs> minutes. They didn't allow him to have any notes. And that split screen, that split screen, if, if you and I are consultants, we're advisors for him. The one thing we say is don't put him on the split screen, no split screens for either candidate. That made him look as bad as the things he said. And so it's clear they set him out there to fail. Because, Chris, we've seen in your clips and clips everywhere, we've seen snippets of Biden, you know, five, 10 seconds a day when he stumbles or stumbles what he says. But they see him every day. And so the people closest to him knew who he was. They knew he was in decline. They knew he would fail. And they needed time to replace him before August. What they didn't count on, they didn't count on, is the family would rise up, just like the godfather. You know, they got to take care of the family business. They're all making a lot of money. So they're not going to throw in the towel. So either it was a setup or all these people behind him are just flat out stupid that they sent him out there. And you can make a case for that. Because every policy they've had, from pulling out of the, from pulling out of Afghanistan to the border to the woke culture yep. to inflation, everything they've done is stupid. So they're True. responsible, but I believe it was a setup from day one. The fact that it was in June with a split screen past his bedtime. Yeah, I'm I'm laughing because yesterday I, I also invoked the Godfather, and this morning on radio oh, invoked did. the Godfather to, <laughs> to 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 define the Biden crime family. Yeah. So let's get into some of those the, the the quote unquote best moments of the debate that you were just making reference to, yeah. Governor. Watch this. The, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare, and I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. <laughs> yeah, Trump couldn't so, make out what he said. Not sure anybody no. around this country can make out what he said. Biden's occupation of the Oval Office, Governor, as you know, has been an offense against Americanism on so many levels that you are making allusion to. But what about the left wing who perpetuated this fiction of Biden's competency? Do you think that Biden and they will pay a price at the ballot box and in the TV news ratings, for example, for this, this big con? So he's going to lose big time if he's on the ballot. I still don't think he's going to be on the ballot. And I think the list to replace him is abysmal. They'll do worse. Kamala Harris, she is a joke, literally. She can't stop laughing. And even Michelle Obama, who I think is the most likely person to come up, because look, they can't replace Kamala with anyone except another female or African-American, or they'll lose the African-American vote and the women vote. So it's either Michelle or Kamala, and Michelle is down about seven points to the president. He'll beat her easily, too. This is, look, these these people who have been supporting the president and his initiatives and driving that, they weren't his closest advisors around him all day. So maybe they were surprised. But the people closest to him, remember, all their, they're the gatekeepers. They want to stay in power themselves because they're the, actually running the country. And of course, mm -hmm. um, the Biden family, as I said, it's a business for them. So it's a matter of time, I believe, before he's gone. And, 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 all, and one of the things that told me that, Chris, as soon as the election, I mean, the debate was over, we were on CNN watching it. And immediately, every Democrat person on that, on that dais just ripped him to shreds. He's, he's got to step down. He's got to quit. This is a disaster. Look, this is all part of the show. Not everyone was in on it, but this is all part of the response. And it's it's like the Russia hoax. It's like the Hunter Biden laptop. Remember, they had they had 50 people sign a letter to, for that hoax. Um, so put nothing past the Marxist left who want to keep control of the country, and they want to handpick the next person that's in there so they can control that person. And look, Obama's running the whole show anyway. He's been running the whole show. He just wants to officially be back in the White House.